Today I'd like to talk to you about filters for just a minute. Filters have been around in the modeling scene for probably 20 years. Um, <clears throat> they're very, very useful, but they're also oftentimes misused and misidentified. Um, there's pre-mixed filters on the market nowadays. This particular one is by um, Sin Industries, which is a subsidiary of MIG Productions, now owned by AK. Um, I have a few of these pre-mixed filter bottles around. I don't use them that much because I find them too thick. They've still got to be thinned. And the colors are really not that useful to me. I still have to mix colors. So I generally prefer to make my own. To make filters, you'll need thinner. Um, this nasty little bottle right here has the cheapest uh, hardware store paint thinner in it that I can find. I generally buy it by the half or, or full gallon. Um, again, I don't buy artist grade uh, thinners or anything like that. I've just never seen the use in it. You'll need uh, oil paint or enamels. Um, I like the oil paints because the colors are, are extremely varied. And the reason why I'm using blue on this tan is for no other reason than you can see it. Um, I would not use blue on tan unless you're going for a specific effect, but in this case, it's for demonstration purposes only. So don't go out and put a blue filter on your tan tank because you said I told you so. So you'll need a nice flat brush, soft brush, and then need a paper towel to, um, to blot it on. And then you'll need a little mixing cup. I like these little clear uh, plastic disposable cups. So you need, um, and you'll need a paint pipette. A deposit a decent amount of thinner in this cup. And then I take my brush. I get just a little bit of oil paint on here. And it really does not take much because you're looking for about a 95 to 5 ratio, basically what amounts to dirty thinner. And I mix this up. And when you test it on your paper, you see how it's just tinting the paper. That's what you're looking for. Is for it to, to just lay down the, a slight um, tinge of color. So when you go to apply it to your model, you load your brush up and then you'll wick it off on a piece of paper, a uh, paper, uh, paper towel, and then you'll gently brush it onto your, your model. You're looking for just a, a slightly damp surface like this. Right, and you're probably not going to see the effect of it on the first round. If you are, if you do, you're probably using it too heavily. So you're just brushing this filter on. And then you would wait for it to dry and you'd come back and, and go over it again if you felt like it was necessary. Um, it may be hard to see on here, but you can actually tell the difference between the glacis here and the transmission cover here. There is a slight different tinge to it, and that's exactly what you're looking for. Uh, what you're not wanting to do is loading up your brush and slopping it on to where it's building up around details and things like that. This is not a wash, okay? So you want to deposit as much as possible off onto a, a paper towel before you start applying it to your model, okay? It should just have a little wet sheen to it like that, and it should dry within a few minutes. And then you can go back And apply this probably this is a little bit too soon but again for demonstration purposes you can go back and give it another give it another coat and it will and you can see the difference between the glacis and the transmission cover in the the color of it and that's what a filter is for it is not to accentuate detail it is simply to adjust the color of your base tones uh, and add you can um, add variation to your paint or you can do it for an effect um, but that's how you do it again 
You can buy pre-made filters, but honestly, this that I just made right here is a quarter of what's in that little container um, right here, and it cost virtually nothing to make. So hopefully that will help you out the next time you start um, trying to work with filters, and uh, we'll see you next time.